One of the main sources of uh, FDIs in Indonesia is the palm oil sector. Uh, especially in palm oil plantation, uh, sugar cane and cacao. Uh, just in the last few years, uh, with the, the new changes to land use in Malaysia and Indonesia, uh, many uh, palm oil companies are now looking for land in Cameroon. So we have many foreign direct investments in the country, such as the mining industry, and also we have in agriculture, the agroforestry programs, such as the uh, palm oil plantations. Now, in 2012, uh, we record uh, more than 12 million hectares uh, palm oil plantation has been established in Indonesia. Yeah, in Malaysia, the investments in agriculture are usually in oil palm, big-scale big uh, production of oil palm or rubber. The first one is land grabbing because they grab land from smallholder farmers. So with the expansion of oil palm plantations across Indonesia, particularly in Kalimantan and Sumatra, we have seen that company operations are usually not accompanied by respect or protections for the rights of the indigenous peoples and the local communities who have customarily inhabited the lands now being leased uh, as economic concessions, industrial concessions uh, to these companies. I think one of the main problems is that the contracts being signed are quite poor. They're not favorable to the Cameroonian government or Cameroonian people. Uh, and communities impacted by these projects and they're not being negotiated in a transparent fashion and many of them actually have uh, confidentiality clauses in them so they, they're not public documents. They uh, force people to go out from their land and they have nowhere to go so they live uh, in outside of the, uh, the plantations and they work as a uh, labor in this plantation in their own land and they get a very very low salary and they have to survive with that kind of salary. They're not asking uh, would you like or no if we uh, building our concession of palm oil here to release your land. If they didn't want to release their land, uh, the company uh, can bring in the police, military officer and uh, just push the community. Yes, so. Uh, community. So, uh, Savit Watts record more than uh, 665 case uh, conflict between the communities and company. Uh, other problems include uh, sort of the social and environmental impacts, the cumulative impacts of the projects. There isn't real good land use planning in Cameroon. And so uh, many projects are being done in maybe one small area and they each produce their own social and environmental impact assessment but no one's thinking about the cumulative impacts of all these projects and how that will impact uh, essentially poor rural people uh, who are mostly farmers and then also hunters and gatherers uh, in the forest. Vast areas of land are being converted to monocroft plantations thereby threatening the food security of the local communities who are no longer able to grow their food crops on these lands, uh, threatening their environment where uh, degradation, deforestation and ill-regulated clearing is taking place and also threatening their livelihoods and economies as well as their cultures uh, and customary modes uh, of subsistence. I think the, the last problem is just the, the deal that the Cameroonian government is getting in these. They're, they're not making as much money as they could or should and they need that money to fund uh, health and education and infrastructure and real key things to, to development. Because in the current context, we're so centered on the rights of investors and business, and we need to turn it upside down and focus on the rights and benefits to communities. And once we have that mentality, then the solutions will come pretty easily. So that, that would be the, the farmer will get benefit and the company also get benefit. Easily, but as long as we're stuck in this trap where we think all we have to do is attract foreign direct investment and where we think all foreign direct investment is inherently virtuous, which, it, which it's not, then we're going to continue to see problems. So I think one of the best tools we have available to us now is free and prior informed consent. 
If we really implement that, and, and that does put communities closer to the center of the design of a project. For me, quality investment is the investment that empower uh, uh, the rural workers, and also, and also they, have, uh, they have to respect the, law, the laws and legislation of the country. A number of social solutions have been adopted by civil society organisations to support indigenous peoples and forest peoples affected negatively by the palm oil sector. These have included grassroots level campaigns and advocacy movements, as well as pleas for legal reform at the national level and at the provincial levels for laws to better recognise uh, and protect the rights of uh, its citizens and of indigenous peoples. At the international level, there have been several movements, submissions and complaints submitted to international human rights bodies and organisations documenting human rights abuses in the palm oil sector. And these have included complaints to the Commission on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination, uh, as well as to the UN Special Rapporteur on the Right to Food and the UN Special Rapporteur on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. We need to look at is all the legal stuff um, from bilateral investment treaties to the WTO to the contracts themselves and what the implications are for the government and for local communities. has been to uh, address uh, the international financing institutions who provide loans to these companies to operate uh, and to raise uh, cases with them where the standards of these financing institutions have been violated. And finally, uh, in more recent years, voluntary certification and standards have also emerged in the forms, form of roundtables, such as the Roundtable on Sustainable Palm Oil, through which also uh, any member of civil society uh, can raise complaints uh, where the standards, principles and criteria have not been followed by a member company. And more on how we see transparency would help on the uh, maximization of the revenues and profits of the industry. It's very important for us to come up with policies at the regional level that will ensure that we really promote sustainable as well as inclusive in the private sector.